Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor. So as you can see in the background, we're going to be creating a grenade throwing system with spawning the grenade, using particles, sound effects, and even a throwing arc and talk about the physics in regards to this, maybe creating explosions to knock other objects apart. So we'll break this down into nice, easy steps, and I hope you'll enjoy it. And you can also get hold of the whole project on my Patreon, along with over 190 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And be sure to check out all the links in the description for the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev and Unity. So first off, I'm going to show you which of the assets that we're going to be using today. So this is a free asset, which is called the M67 Grenade, and I'll have all the links in the description. So you can download that as the grenade model. I am using the high quality realistic explosions, which I did get in a sale, but you can use any particle effect which you could have as an explosion. It's just an, as an example, and I'll put the link down to that one too, because these are actually some really high quality effects. And then I'm using the grenade sound FX pack. It's got around 40 different grenade style effects, whether that's throwing, impacts, explosions, loads of great stuff. And I'm also using some custom ones that I've got myself. So first of all, we need to start out by creating ourselves a grenade. And this grenade is something that we're going to spawn anytime that we want to throw it. So first of all, I'm going to look in models and I'm going to find either the modern or the old style M67 grenade. I'm going to add this to my hierarchy. You can see the object here. Now you can see that the pivot is in a bit of a weird place and I don't really like that, but we need to make sure that we have the pivot point at the center of this object because we're going to spawn it and we don't want to get issues so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to reset those transforms by right clicking at the top. And I'm just going to call this my grenade. I'm going to just right click that other object and unpack the prefab. And then what I'm going to do when I've unpacked that, I'm going to drag all of these objects into here. And then what I'm going to do here is set all the X, Y, and Z positions to zero on each of the objects, just so that we can get them directly centered to where we want that to be. Now you see when we can select our new object, you can see that it's parented in exactly the place where it'd be the center of our object. So everything else is in exactly the place. So with our grenade that we've now created, I'm going to add a sphere collider because it's more of a spherical object. And you can see the collider all the way around my object and we can make this much, much smaller. 0.05 for the radius should be somewhat suitable. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a rigid body to our object. And you can adjust the masses and other things. I'm going to leave it using gravity because it's going to be a physics based object. And what we might want to do for later is add an audio source to this. So then if it does impact sounds or other things like that, we can actually play that. So I'll make sure that I won't tick on awake and I'll leave that all by default. Now we're going to create a script to control what our grenade should do. So what we're going to do is add a new component, just go to a new script and I'm just going to call this our grenade. We can open up in Visual Studio. So I've just created some headers just to make this look nicer in the inspect. So we've got things to do with what things are going to spawn when we do the explosion. So first of all, I'm just going to create serialized field private and then we're going to set a game object, which is the explosion effect prefab or the reference to the effect that's going to appear when we explode. Then I like to create a private vector three for the offset of the particle. So say we need to spawn that particle either left, right, or up or down, then in the explosion settings, we'll have three float variables, which are the explosion delay. So the time before it actually explodes, the force of which is going to create when it explodes and then the radius of the actual explosion. And then we'll be able to create some audio effects at some point soon. Then I'm going to have two private variables, which are pertaining to a float for the countdown. So how long before it's exploded? And then a check to say has it exploded, we don't want to do anything anymore. So in our start method, we want to say that countdown is then equal to our explosion delay. Then I want to create an update method and say that if has exploded is false in this case, we want to say that the countdown is minus equal to time dot delta time. So then if countdown is ever less than or equal to zero, then we want to make some outcome happen. So then we're going to have a method called explode. And then we're going to say that is exploded is equal to true. So then we won't do our countdown anymore. So like I said, below here, then we want to create our method. So we'll say void explode. So we'll just write it back up here. First of all, we need to instantiate the actual explosion effect at the grenade's position. 
plus the offset, whatever we might want to use. So we can start by writing game object, and then we can say a shorthand for the explosion effect that we're going to use. Then we're going to instantiate and then open up brackets, the explosion effect prefab, then say the transform dot position of wherever our grenade is, plus the explosion particle offset, comma, quaternion dot identity. So in this case, you could then destroy the particle after a certain amount of time. So you could then destroy the explosion effect. If you're interested in that comma, after so many seconds, you can set that in the inspector if you really want. Here, then we want to maybe play a sound effect, but we'll come on to this later. Then we might want to do something like affecting other sorts of physics objects. And then afterwards, we can destroy our game object when we're done with it. So then we don't have anything that we need to do. So I will give a really quick example of actually affecting other physics objects that are nearby. So I'll just say nearby force apply as my method. Then we're going to start by writing collider with then some square brackets. And we'll say colliders because we're going to create an array of every collider that we find. Then we'll say physics dot overlap sphere, then open up brackets. We'll say transform dot position. So whatever position this is at. And then based on the explosion radius, we've already got at a semicolon. And then we'll say for each open brackets collider, then we'll say that nearby object in colliders. Then we'll say that the rigid body, and we'll shorthand that to RB equals nearby object dot get component. Then we can also say rigid body, then end that out with the brackets and a semicolon. And then say that if rigid body is not equal to null at any point, then we'll say rigid body dot add explosion force open brackets by the explosion force that we've created at the transform dot position of the explosion radius. So as it suggests, we get a list of all the colliders that are in the overlap of the sphere that we're looking for. And then we're going to look, search through that array for all of the colliders in there. And then if they do have a rigid body on them, we're going to apply the explosion force to push them somewhere. So now what I'm going to do is copy this method and call it here. If you go back into Unity, you'll see our grenade now. Is you can see it will have the explosion effect. Then we can go to our assets and choose, and maybe I'll choose explosion one, left the explosion particle offset on one. And if we test this out and press play, you'll see it there. And you'll see it explode after a certain amount of time. Now what we're going to do is create a throwing script to be able to throw the object exactly where we want. So I might go to my FPS controller here and add a new script. I'm just going to call this grenade thrower. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio and we're going to start out by writing a field for the grenade prefab that we're going to spawn. I'm going to start by creating a variable to the main camera and saying that main camera is going to be equal to camera.main so then we can access this more easily. Then we're going to create an update method to be able to check when we want to do things. So in this case, we want to say that if input dot get key down open brackets, we need to be able to specify a key that we want. So in our case here, below the prefab that we spawn, I'm just gonna have some grenade settings. So I'm gonna have a private key code and then the throw key. And it's just gonna be default is mouse zero. So it's a left click. So on get key down, we'll say that we want the throw key. And then when this happens, we want a method to actually start throwing. Then we actually also want to check of, because I wanted to create it. So rather than just throwing it, I wanted to charge it up so we could throw it further. So I'm going to create a variable called is charging, and then we're going to have something called charge throw. So what we're going to do above the main camera or wherever you want, we're going to create a Boolean for is charging, set that by default to false, and then have a float for the charge time. And then in the end, we might want another if statement, which says input dot get key up in this case, and then throw key again, because we're checking if we have let go of the key, we expect that we can throw it. So we'll say that we want to do the release throw method. So under here, we want to start by doing our start throwing method. So we want to specify in this case, we might want to a pull pin sound, which we can create later. We want to say that is charging is equal to true. Then the charge time is currently equal to zero because we may need to reset it if we come to a different point of doing it. And in my case that I want to create this and we'll show this later. So we might want to then create the trajectory line 
to make this happen. But that's all we need to do for the very start now. Okay, so in this case, we had another method called charge throw. So as we're charging it, we want to say that the charge time plus equals the time dot delta time. And in our logic below here, we'll have some more functionality to update the trajectory line based on the velocity that which we've captured based on how long we hold the object for. And then in our last method, we'll have something called release throw. So when we let go of the key, we want to actually throw the grenade based on the force that we've given it. So in this case, we'll have a method called throw grenade, which we're going to create another just to keep this all nicely laid out. So we'll have something called throw grenade and we'll have it as a flow for the force. So in this method back up again, we'll say throw grenade in brackets math f dot min. So it's always the smallest of two values. So we'll say that the charge time times by the throw force comma the max force and then we'll end two brackets and a semicolon there we'll say that is charging is equal to false and then we'll just hide the line later so now at the top we have two floats which are going to be throw force and the max force so by default the throw force is i'll just we'll just set to 10 and the maximum we can set to 20 and you can just this you can just throw it further if you set the max force to longer the longer you hold it so now with that created it's going to call this method to be able to spawn the object that we really want so in this case we have a vector 3 of the spawn position that we're going to spawn this object so up here back at the top with the grenade settings I've got a transform for throw position because I wanted specifically to throw it from a direction. Say you've got it in your right hand or your left hand, you can choose where you want that to be. And then the direction, if you want to create some force to make it look like an arc or from the side or whatever you want that to be, we'll just create a nice offset. So then we're going to have the spawn position equal to the throw position dot position plus our main camera dot transform so this means it will take the actual throw position. So say we set it to the right hand when we create an object and then always in front of the camera. So wherever we're looking, it always updates it. So it's actually in front of us. So in this case, now we might want to spawn our grenade. So we can have a game object of grenade, set that equal to instantiate like we did before, the grenade prefab, comma, the spawn position that we just created, comma, the main camera, dot transform dot rotation and then a semicolon at the end because we're just going to instantiate the game object at the spawn position that we'd already specified with the actual rotation of the camera too so it's always where we need it to be now we might want to add some force or velocity to the grenade when we throw it so we're going to say that the rigid body rb for short is equal to our grenade that we just have spawned dot get component and then in angle brackets, we'll say the rigid body because we're going to find the rigid body component. And then we're going to set all these things together to set a final direction of how this is going to be thrown. So vector three, we'll hot call this the final throw direction equals open brackets main camera dot transform dot forward plus the throw direction dot normalized. Then we'll say rigid body dot add force open brackets final throw direction times by the force that we're going to apply to it based on what we'd already calculated comma force mode in all capitals dot velocity change which means it ignores the actual mass of the object and just applies the velocity to it and then we could actually have a throwing sound if we so wish and then you could have another method down here which is the logic for the showing the trajectory Although we just need to add our methods in here to start throwing, charging and releasing. So now when this updates, we need a grenade prefab. So from here, we can drag our grenade prefab and just drag it into the inspector. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I reset the transform so it's all zero by right clicking the transforms and choosing reset. I'm going to go back to the FPS controller and I'm going to add my grenade prefab here. My throw key is going to be mouse zero because I'd already set it. We're going to have a throw position. I'll give you the example. I created a box and I parented that to my main camera. And this is going to be my throw position. So you can see it here in the game scene. In the game view, you can't see it unless I move it out here. So I wanted it to spawn, as you can see, just down here below the sort of visuals of the camera. 
then we don't need the actual mesh render anymore. This was just a reference to the position that it's going to be. So if we go back to the FPS controller, drag the throw position on there, you can have the throw direction. So if you add one to Y, we're going to do more of an upwards arc when we throw it to make it look more natural. Then the throw force and the max force so we can never go or throw it too far, like to infinity. So now if we press play and I left click and hold it, you can see that then I throw a grenade based on how far. If I do a little click, I'll just drop it by my feet. It's very dangerous and it applies all those forces like we wanted, spawns the prefabs and everything that we wanted to happen. And so ultimately at this point, you've got a grenade which throws, which explodes and applies force. So this could be it, this could be complete, but we're gonna add some nice fine tuning to this. So we're going to have it so when the grenade blows up, create some sounds, some sound effects and make this a more realistic example. So we're going to open up our grenade script again. And you remember before I said we could start playing some sound effects and things like that when it explodes or it has impacts and cool little things like that is I'll have a private field of audio source and I've just got this lower hand of audio then in the start method what we're going to do is say the audio source is equal to get component audio source so we're going to find that on the object to be able to do something then in this case I've got the audio effects that I want is not they're just as audio clips and I'm going to have one as explosion sound and one as the impact sound now I also do need something special that I wanted to add to the top. So I'm going to create a prefab, which we spawn, which we instantiate. So this is for creating an explosion because we use destroy. If we destroyed the entire game object, if we just had the audio source, which is for the explosion, it would just disappear when we might not want it to. Whereas the impact sounds will only be relevant when the sound, when the actual grenade is alive rather than when it's destroyed. So we can go back to the explode method and you can see I wanted to play a sound effect. Maybe I'll create a method called play sound at position. And then we'll specify the explosion sound that we wanted. Then under here, we're going to write a new method called play sound at position like we specified. And we're going to take the parameter of an audio clip and just call this clip. And then below that, we're going to start writing our object. So we're going to start by saying game object and the audio source object is equal to instantiate like we've done before the audio source prefab comma transform dot position comma quaternion dot identity and then have a semicolon there so that's going to initially initiate our object so in this case we want to create a reference to the actual instantiated audio source then we can say instantiated audio source is equal to the audio source object dot get component audio source then close that up and say that instantiated audio source dot clip will equal to the clip that we just passed into this method. So the explosion sound that we wanted. Then we'll say that the instantiated audio source dot spatial blend is equal to one. So this makes it a 3D sound because we need to specify that because it'll probably be 2D by default. Then we'll say that the instantiated audio source dot play. So it'll play that sound effect over in the distance. And then we can destroy that instantiated prefab after the clip is finished. Then we can say destroy audio source object comma instantiated audio source dot clip dot length. So after that audio is finished, we're going to destroy the object altogether. So that's perfect for our explosion sound and we'll give that a test. Now we must make sure we go into the project panel and update our actual prefab. So in my case here, I'd already created an audio source prefab that's going to be created. So you can create one by just creating an empty game object, adding the audio source component to it, make sure that it doesn't loop and it doesn't have play on a way. You can actually set the spatial blend all the way to 3D if you so wish, then you can adjust any of the 3D settings if you need to, but I'm just going to leave them by default. The volume is at one. You drag that in down here and you'll create yourself the prefab. So if you go back to the grenade prefab, you can add that the audio source prefab should go in there. Then the explosion sound that we're going to use is going to be grenade one shot based on that pack that I'd got. You can mess around and choose whichever one you want. We could try this now and throw this into our objects. and you could hear the sound effect. Just like that. And it still applied the force just as we wanted. So there's one example to adding audio effects. 
Now we want to make our grenade a little bit more realistic by maybe making some impact sounds when it hits other objects in the world. So we can do this by going void on collision enter. Pre it'll just pre-write this for us, collision, collision. Then we can say that we could say that the audio source that we've got on this object already dot clip is equal to impact sound source dot spatial blend should it equal one make sure that it's 3d and then we can say that the audio source dot play similar like we did before so anytime this object hits a collision we'll play that sound effect just to make it more realistic so if we go back to our grenade prefab again in the project folder we can have an impact sound so maybe i just want type in impact so where do I want it? Maybe impact on metal, something like that, which I will create. So on the audio source, I just made sure that I made this a linear roll off just so we'll be able to hear it a little bit further away. So now when we press play, I throw it, you can hear it start making some effects when it impacts the ground and then still the explosion audio when we want it. <laughs> so now we might want to create some sound effects for the actual reference that we're going to have when we throw the grenade. So in the grenade thrower script, we're going to have some similar things going on. So what I like to do is create an audio manager for a way to play sound effects directly in another script, which will control exactly what they should do. So I'm going to create a script called grenade audio manager. Now what I'm going to do is create an awake method. I'm going to create that into a singleton. So we be able to access it from other scripts, have it a, a don't destroy and load, and then also find the component of the audio source when we want to use it. So to make this work, we want a private audio source that we're going to be able to find just there. And then we want a public static grenade audio manager as the instance. So just so that we can set it so we can access it from other places. Then what we're going to quickly do is have a public void called play one shot and open that up and say that this is going to be based on the audio clip. It's going to be a clip and then float the clip volume which by default I might set to 0.2. So this isn't going to be a 3D sound. This is just going to be some sound that's going to play. Could be anywhere, any 2D sound that we're going to be able to control. Now we can say that the audio source that we've already found dot play one shot, open brackets, clip, and then based on the clip volume that we specify, like I said, default is 0.2, so it doesn't blast our eardrums out. So I've already created an audio manager game object by right clicking, creating empty and just applying an audio source to it. And that's got everything by default, make sure you untick everything and have it as a 2D sound. And I've just got the volume at 0.5 to begin with. Then what we can do is we can add our grenade audio manager script, open up our grenade thrower script now. Now I've created a header for audio and I'm going to have a pull pin sound. So when we pull the pin and then also when we throw the grenade. So in the method for start throwing, we wanted this to have the grenade audio manager dot instance dot play one shot for that one we wanted to specify and then we'll say the pull pin sound 0.5 f we'll have for this one to make it slightly louder and then in our method at the bottom we wanted a throwing sound so we can have a grenade audio manager dot instance dot play one shot open up and then we'll have the throw sound as 0.5 now we'll go back to our fps controller where we've got the grenade thrower so i've got pull pin the for the pull pin that I've created so I've got a sound effect here which is not in the pack but I'll have it on my patreon and then throw sound is let's stick to throw one and give that a try now when now you'll hear it when I left click you'll hear the pull pin and you won't hear anything until I let go of that specific button you could hear me pull the pin and then if you could just about hear the grenade throwing So now we have everything that we need with sound effects, with explosions, with throwing, with all the physics. So the last things we're going to need to do is look at the line renderer and then also maybe look at just affecting the physics of how it bounces. So I've just muted the sound and when we throw this object, you can see it doesn't really roll realistically to how we might want this to be because it should just stop dead there. So to adjust this, we're going to actually affect the rigid body. So I like to up the mass of the rigid body on the prefab. You can up the drag, but only a very small amount. So it could be to about 0.05 because that will actually affect the drag when you throw it in the air. So you don't want to affect that too much. Now the angular drag is the good one to affect. So you could set that to something like 500. Now, when we pick up and we throw the object, we get a much more realistic 
look of how it would roll and just land based on it being an object that in itself it does have a sphere collider but we don't want it to roll like it's a natural ball it's not it would just hit the ground maybe roll a few times and do that now i have created something called a physics material to just dampen the friction and also create a little bit of extra bounciness so to do that you can right click create and choose physics material i've just named it grenade put the dynamic friction and static friction to five and set the bounciness to 0 0.2 and to apply that go back on your grenade prefab drag the grenade physics material and drag it in here now when we press play we could throw it and it does get a little bit of extra bounciness and also does have a little bit of extra friction based on when we threw it so then we don't get as much rolling and we just get it hit the floor as if it's a, a sort of heavy weighted object. So the last thing that I want to add is add a component to your FPS controller and it's going to be called a line renderer. Now the line renderer is something which essentially renders a line wherever you specify that it should do that. Now I've put the width, you can edit this width and I've just put it about 0.2. I've got all the settings like this and I think they are by default as I recall. Now I've created a line material, which is just a basic material, which is just a default material. You can right click, create and choose material. Then I've just made sure that it's transparent in its rendering mode. It's just slightly transparent and I've put it red and just so that you can nicely see it. Then you can apply that onto your material section if you put one and had the line material. Now in our script, which is the grenade thrower script, we're going to add a new field here, which is called private line renderer. And this is just going to be our trajectory line that we're going to create. So from there, we'll go down to our start throwing section. And in this case, I'm going to just say that our trajectory line dot enabled equals true. So if it's hidden by default, we're going to show it because we're going to start the throwing process. So then in our charge, we need to use the charge time. So first of all, so in our grenade throw, this is gonna help us display our actual line and actually display it where we want it to be. So in this case, we're going to have vector three, grenade velocity, set that equal to main camera, dot transform, dot forward, plus the throw direction, and then dot normalized, times by math f dot min, open brackets, our charge time times by the throw force, comma, the max force in this case. It just takes the minimum value and never lets it exceed the maximum value. And then we're going to have the method that we want to create, which is show trajectory. And then we'll have our throw position dot position plus the throw position dot forward, comma, the grenade velocity because we're going to pass that into the method that we're going to create down here so down here we have void show trajectory then in brackets here so we're going to have a vector three of the origin of where we'd like to create it and then the vector three of the speed the vector three of the speed or the velocity that we created based on how much we should draw that line so remember we had the velocity and we had it the actual position that we want to create this in so now when we're showing it so we want to create a vector three. So we want to create a an array here of points that we're going to have, which are going to create the points for how the line should be rendered. Then we'll say new vector three. And we're going to specify in this case, you can make it more accurate by adding more points, but we're going to add a hundred points into this line. You could reduce this or make it more. So our array is going to equal 100 different points where we're going to draw that line gradually. Then we'll say that trajectory line dot position count because this is based on how many points it should have then we'll do the points dot length so it's going to be the length of our array and then we'll create a for loop so we'll do if say for int i is equal to zero so if i is less than points dot length we'll say that i plus plus so we're going to create to continue the line until we reach the end then we'll say float time equals i times by 0.1f, then we're going to say that our points in the square brackets i equals the origin where they should be based on the speed times by the time plus 0.5f times by physics.gravity times 
time times time. And then below here, we can say the trajectory line dot set positions in brackets points. And this little equation here is for projectile motion. So it's based on displacement equals the initial velocity times by the time plus 0.5 plus the acceleration of the object times by the time squared pretty much. And it calculates the point of each position of where that should be. And then one last thing that we do in the release throw. So when we've actually going to throw the object, we need to actually make sure that trajectory line is equal to false. So we don't want to show it anymore when we're actually throwing the object. It just wants to get out of the way. So on our FPS controller, make sure that you add the trajectory line line renderer to that slot by just dragging it in. So then in this case, you can left click to draw the line as far as the max will allow. And again, you can adjust this based on the maximum force and the force that you're allowed to use with your objects. So there you go. You can have fun messing around with this. So this tutorial took quite a while to make and I hope you found it useful and be sure to check the entire project and all the scripts on my Patreon. So do let me know what you think. If you've got any suggestions, any ways to improve it, I'd love to hear from you. Be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best sales, savings, and everything you can find in game dev. Be sure to check out all my assets on the Unity Asset Store and the great savings on my website. Big thank you to all my patrons and a massive thank you to Peter Steiner and Christian Van Ziel for their amazing support and all you guys for coming to watch. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.